Australian health officials have praised residents for playing their part in controlling the coronavirus pandemic. With Australia now reporting no new infections for a week, Chief Public Health Officer Nicola Spohr says the state is in a good place. Australia has only 14 active cases remaining and one of two men in intensive care for some time has recovered enough to be moved to a general hospital ward. So far, Australia has had 438 confirmed COVID-19 infections, but 96% are now considered recovered. There have still no cases among the 699 Australians repatriated from India last week, though they remain in quarantine. Plus TV Africa spoke with Amelia Roberts, a journalist in Australia. We definitely like to think so. Perhaps New Zealand would take a bit of issue with that title. Definitely in comparison to many countries around the world, we are in a very lucky situation at the moment. Our rate of new infections has been decreasing by the day. We're just under 7,000 confirmed cases. So it definitely appears that we have managed to flatten the curve significantly. Now, what measures were adopted during the lockdown that you say will have um, and given SA the, the, the privilege to be called the, the safest place on earth right now? Um, it really, really comes down to our restrictions being put in place when they were. Thankfully, they haven't been as strict as Europe and the UK and America. There was initially a lot of mixed messages and a bit of confusion around what we were meant to do with from the government that has since been cleared up. Um, it does vary state by state, though. For example, in New South Wales, where Sydney is and where I live, a lot of public gatherings were banned completely. You are only allowed to see people who that you immediately live with, family or housemates. You couldn't travel unless you were going to work or the shops or exercising. Um, that's recently lifted, though. We're allowed to hang out with more people and the restrictions are slowly easing off. All right, what were, the, what were the compliance level like during the time of all of these restrictions and banning public places and gatherings? Would you say they were like 100 percent? Everyone has been on board. Um, the police have been relatively involved in enforcing some of the restrictions in place, but it is really based off trust here, and everyone has been relatively good with complying with the restrictions. And schools, are they in session now? Currently not. The Prime Minister was actually very reluctant to let kids stay home. He wanted kids to go to schools. So they didn't infect the elderly and the frail. But since school holidays, everything has really taken place remotely using Zoom and using Google Classrooms. Um, next week, though, most high school students and primary school students will be returning to school. Now, Millie, what do you attribute the control effect of the pandemic to as concerns Australia? Might it have something to do with the geographical spread relative to population density? Well, there's no denying that Australia is a very, very large continent, but it's actually, for the most part, a lot of the land is uninhabitable. So I would say that it plays a small percent of how we've dealt with the response because generally speaking a lot of people do live in the metro areas much like in new york and in rome although less densely concentrated there what i would pin down the success to would be widely available testing um, it's just a matter of going through a drive-through and you can get your results via text um, in 24 hours on top of that social distancing measures and keeping 1.5 meters away from everyone and finally the travel restrictions australia put in place has played a significant role in us being the safest country in the world. Finally, Millie, what are, what are things like during this period of relative ease? They're good. I would say that morale is considerably high, especially given that just before coronavirus, Australia had nationwide devastating bushfires. We thought that was going to be the biggest story of the year, and then coronavirus happened just a couple of weeks later. It hasn't been easy for everyone. Um, there's been a lot of job loss and a lot of welfare measures taken in place to cater for these people. Um, and a few crazy stories. Australia was one of the first countries to see stockpiling and panic buying of groceries. It was pretty much impossible to buy toilet paper for about two months. But things are starting to ease back as we return to normal society.